Hello and welcome to the first Whiteboard Wednesday. So in this series, we take an interview, a software engineering interview question, and I go through it in real time. So I haven't seen the problem beforehand. So you'll be able to see my thought process and how I interact with the interviewer in real time, the entire time that I'm solving the problem. So it'll give you a good idea about what questions to ask, how to make assumptions, and so on and so forth. So let's go through it and hopefully it's helpful in your interview process. So I think I understand the problem, but let me lay down all of the assumptions and the inputs and outputs. So just to make sure that we're both on the same page. So let's say I have an input of an array with integers of integers and the output would be one integer that occurs in that array an odd amount of times. Correct. All right. So one integer occurring in array odd times. So just to make sure I'm not missing anything, is it possible? Is it just an array of integers? Is it possible that there are um, characters or strings? No, for this problem, we assume that the array we get is mm -hmm. entirely consisting of integers. OK, perfect. And there would be only one answer. So there, there, there would be just one integer yeah. that would be yes. occurring odd amount yeah. of times. So all of the other ones would be occurring even times. Yeah. OK, perfect. Um, so just to set this up, there are multiple ways to approach this problem. Mm -hmm. um, the, the first one that comes to mind is just to iterate through the array mm -hmm. and in some way have a, have a log of each of, the, each of the elements in the array uh, to see how many times I've already iterated on that element. What so it, it, can, it, it can be like a hash map or an object. Um, and I can increment the counter every time I, I encounter that element again. I see. So just, just so it's a bit concrete, you know, let me, let's go through an example and um, we'll, we'll see how it works. So let's see. Example. Let's say I have an array by the name of ARR. And just for the sake of this example, let's keep it short. So it's easier for us to go through it. I will say two, four, six, four, and two. Actually, just, just to make sure that we have a combination of both even and odd, odd integers, let me, let me take two out and let me replace it with one. Just, I, I don't think it would make a difference, but just so we do. So let's say that's an input array. And what I want to do now is iterate through this array and have some form of a log um, on the side that keeps track of how many times I've iterated through the elements. So let me, let me say for each element, let's call it L in array. Mm -hmm. For this example, let's just go through it. So the first one I encounter is one. So this is my hash map on the side. And I look at my hash map, I see does one exist as a key? And in this case, it doesn't. So I will create a key. Let's say I convert it to string. And, and. So, uh, is there any particular reason why you are converting it to the string? So technically, I don't need to convert it to a string, but in JavaScript, if I'm thinking about an object, so I'm just I'm familiar with JavaScript more than any other language. But I, I think if you were doing it with Java, you would you would be able to have integers as um, as as keys. So in this case, actually, just for simplification purposes, let me not even convert it to a string. Let's let's assume that it's pure pseudocode, yeah. and I say the key is one. 
and the counter at this time is 1. OK. okay. So for each element I iterated, so for 1, um, I hadn't encountered it before, so I created a new key. Now, with 4, it's the same thing. So I create a new key and instantiate its value to, to 1. Same thing with 6. Then I uh, encounter 4 and I see, oh, it actually exists. So I just increment its counter by 1. Mm -hmm. And when I encounter 1, I do the same thing. Increments counter by 1. So what, I, what I'm left with is all these values with most of them, all, all of them except for one with an odd value. Yeah. So what I want to do is iterate through all of the keys mm -hmm. in, in the object yeah. and, and, and perform a modular operation on their values. Mm -hmm. And if it yields zero, then modulo of two, then I know that if it yields zero, then it is even, but if it doesn't, then that's our answer. Yeah. So I think let's, let's think about um, the, the different complexities okay. that we would encounter in such a solution. So first is I'll be looping through the array entirety. So this would be O of N. It's a linear time operation. At the same time, for, for at least half of the values in the array, I would be looping through again um, for, for, the, for the object. So in the worst case, it'll be half uh, n over 2, but it comes down to linear as well. So this looping would be linear as well. So at the end of the day, I'm talking about linear time complexity. Um, but there's also space complexity. Yeah. So I am, I'm storing a lot of values here in the object. And actually now, now that I think about it, probably, I probably don't need, so what, what, what happens? What happens here? I, let's look at the lifetime or the lifespan of a value, right? It, for a value, it starts out at 2, or it's, sorry, it starts out at 1, then it goes to 2, then it goes to 3, then it goes to 4. So for this value to be our answer, when it's at 1, it can be our answer. When it's at 2, it's not an answer. When it's at 3 now, it can be an answer again. But when it's at 4, it can't be an answer. And we are actually iterating through all of these values as we're updating the hash map. So maybe, maybe there's a way for, for, me to, for me to say that when it is, when it is even, when it is even, don't even take that into account anymore because because when I first instantiate it it's an answer and when I increment it after it's even then it's an answer so this 3 the value the the quality of the value 3 over there is the same as the quality of value 1 so how will you be differentiating odd values with the even values you will still be going through the Loop. Yep. So I will still be going through the loop, but I want to minimize. So in the hash map, I want to minimize the number of elements that I loop through, so right? No. Let's let's can say. Can yeah. So let's say let's say I am at value one. And I know that it can be an answer, but then at, as soon as I move on to its counter um, two, then I know that it can't be an answer anymore. Then maybe at that time I can delete it right away. Okay, so the only thing we have in the hash map is either one mm -hmm. or nothing. 
So the only thing we can have in the hash map is either one or nothing. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so for this object, then I can. I won't even use one. I can. I can just say that when I encounter it the first time, it is odd. So mm -hmm. I put the value as true, and then when I encounter it the second time, mm -hmm. I delete its value. Then when I encounter, because I don't care about that value anymore, yeah. but then when I encounter it the third time, I look at the hash map and I see that, oh, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So I'll put that again as true. And the true will just signify that the occurrence is odd. So actually, if we go through this, then at the end, the, the, the number of elements in this hash map will just be one. Yeah. So that will save me from this computation. Okay, so let me, do you mind if I erase this? Yeah, sure. And can we have a function that takes in this array of integer mm -hmm. and returns that particular integer that is yep. occurring? Yep. Um, before, before I go into that function, do you mind if I just go through this example with the new logic just to make sure that we're on the same page? Uh, or you can just have the function ready and we can go ahead with the function. Okay, yeah, that's that, fine. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. So let me just erase this as well. Perfect. Okay, so we'll, as I'm going through the function, we will go through this example as well. Yeah. Function, uh, let's call it find odd. Find odd. It takes in an array. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I will need some form of a hash map. So let me instantiate that. Let me call it. So at any point in time, the hash map will only have the odd occurrences. So let me call it odd, odd list. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Empty object on a hash map. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, that's it. So let's um, loop through this array. And for each element, we'll do the same thing. So let's say I am at element one. Yeah. I already have the hash map here. I will see whether or not it exists in the hash map. If it does, if it does, then I delete it. If it doesn't, then I add it as a key with uh, with a value too. So um, if if L exists in odd list, if yes, then delete. Um, then I delete odd list then I delete odd list L now if it doesn't exist else odd list L equals true Perfect. So after I go through this loop, mm -hmm. based on our assumptions that there can be only one answer, mm -hmm. then there should only be one integer left at the end um, in the in the odd list. So I'll say I will say return mm, odd list dot keys. So let's say odd list dot keys is returning me an array of all of its keys, and I'm looking for as it's as 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 it'll be just an array of one integer, I will look for the index zero in it, okay. and this should yield odd list. Uh, this this should yield in this case the the number six. Yep. Okay, so the function looks good to me. 
and the time and space complexity is also optimized. So I guess we have our answer over here. Perfect. So as you saw, there are a few things we can learn from this interaction. The first is how I broke down the problem into simple terms and then I further made it very clear and visible through an example. And I went through that example without even going into pseudocode and, and solved it just to make sure that my understanding of the problem was the same as the interviewer. So if I'm not going through the pseudocode and I'm just going through the example, then the interviewer is more likely to, to suggest where, where my assumptions are not in line with her assumptions. The second thing, if, if you noticed, was when I was optimizing the problem, I suggested to the interviewer that, hey, do you mind if I go through the problem over here again uh, in, the, in the optimized way for the example and then do the pseudocode? But perhaps the interviewer was out of time at that time and they were just trying to hurry and rush. And they said, no, 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 why don't you write the function why don't you write the pseudocode and as you're writing it, go through that example. And I really wanted to go through the example first, but you never say no to an interviewer. You know, you make sure that the interviewer is happy. Uh, and that's how they'll collaborate better with you. So I said, okay, let's, let's do it that way. So the, the key is to always be clear, always be calm, and always be really nice to the interviewer. And that way you will not just be able to better solve the problem, but also you'll be perceived as professional and also someone that the interviewer would love to work with. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe and comment down below which other questions and what type of questions you want me to cover the next time and also share it with your friends because if you liked it, chances are that your friends and peers and colleagues would like it as well. So this series is a weekly series. So every Wednesday, there'll be a new video. So I hope to see you next Wednesday.